All right, I almost forgot to spit my gum out before I sit down here. Didn't think that you all would want to hear me chewing my cud like a cow. Some comments on some of my other videos when I used to chew tobacco last year was that the tobacco chewing was really distracting to the people trying to watch. In fact, some of them saying it even made them rather ill. I honestly had not thought of that because I'd chewed tobacco for so many years that I just never really give it a thought. Yeah, it's spitting bottles, spit here and there. Pretty nasty habit, people would say. I didn't think of it that way. Admittedly now, though, for all of you watching on YouTube, I no longer chew chewing tobacco. In fact, I quit, I think it was November, and this is February, almost the end of February. So November, December, January, and February, working toward four months now. And that's a whole nother video about how to quit if you have a habit. But anyway, this video today is going to be about something interesting. I got to thinking about it when I went and did something earlier today. I just happened to look up and found a website, and I'm going to post the website in the comments below so that you can see where I got the list from. I'm not going to discuss the list in their way so much as I'm going to put my own spin on it. What this is is a list of really dirty things. So I guess you could say this video is for your germaphobe or your neat freak, clean freak. This is for you to decide whether these things really gross you out or whether you don't see them as a big deal. First on the list, blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. We've all blown out the candles on a birthday cake. What in the world could they be talking about? Well, according to the website, spitting. So I guess it's not like, it's like, all over the candles and all over the cake. So the next time you go to a birthday party and somebody had, I don't know, 30, 40 candles to blow out and they had to huff and puff like the wolf trying to get the little pigs, maybe you're eating a little bit of spittle. You decide. Number two, backpacks. It kind of addressed them in school backpacks, but I got to thinking about it and I use a backpack every day. I go to work and usually I ride in a van pool, so I leave my backpack in my vehicle, toss things in I'm going to take to work with me, and take the backpack from my car, put it in the floorboard of the van, which where you know numerous people's feet's been, take it to work. Usually at work I hang it up, but I used to always set it in the floor behind my desk, right beside my trash can. So, yeah, I guess backpacks could be dirty. They discussed them being in like gym locker rooms, gym lockers here there and yonder and all kinds of places of course notoriously on the floor and their assumption is that's a really nasty place and the backpacks pick up all kinds of germs so again you decide where's your backpack shower loofahs I didn't even read their comments I do have a loofah and I do have like a elongated scrubber that I use Never really give them a lot of thought, but I guess, you know, it does stay in a moist bathroom and it sits there after you've scrubbed all the bacteria and stuff and dirt off your body. You just kind of rinse it out, and toss it back in the basket or hang it up on a hook or whatever you're doing and let it, I don't know, fester, we can say, for the lack of a better term, maybe. Anyway, you decide whether a loofah is a bad thing. Dirty makeup brushes. I don't really have any experience with that, but I guess I could see it. The first thing that entered my head when I was reading about makeup brushes wasn't, I didn't actually read their text, just that they considered them really dirty, was like going into a high-end retail store. Let's, I'm not going to name any names. I started to, but I'm not. But let's say you go into this really high-end store, or even whatever store, where they have a makeup counter, where they have makeup specialists. How many other people have they used those makeup brushes on their faces before they got around to your face? How many other people's skin oils and everything else? And You know, we're always hearing about people with eczema. We're hearing about psoriasis, plaque psoriasis. We're hearing about... 
what is the thing if you've had chicken pox and then lay, uh, shingles yeah it's supposedly really horrible and it's not I guess contagious but it's just a virus you have in your body. But either way, you can imagine all those creepy skin disorder things that might be on somebody else's skin and the same brush that you're getting your makeup trial from the store. Yeah, I'm just going to stop there. That even grosses me out. I don't wear makeup. So, next one was pumping gas. And it talked about that they had some kind of collegiate or college study that I guess they went around and sampled gas pumps all over the place, the handles apparently, and they tested them for all sorts of bacteria and said they were very dangerous. In fact, they put out that uh, there were quite a bit of bacteria that could cause significant health problems on gas pump handles. So, there you go. Beware of the gas pump. Next was eating while bowling. Eating while bowling. You know, I never really give that a lot of thought. I don't bowl anymore, but I guess it makes real good sense because, you know, you go into bowl, the first thing you're going to do is go over and you probably don't have your own shoes. And yeah, they spray that whatever it is in the shoes that makes them smell funny, but I've often wondered, does that stuff really kill the toe jam and the funk in those shoes? So you're getting shoes that's been on hundreds of other people's feet and you're putting them all over your hands tying the strings of your hands. That's pretty gross in itself, and admittedly, the bowling shoe rental always kind of grossed me out and creeped me out, but then we go on to the bowling balls. Unless you're bringing your own shoes and balls, you're going to use their ball, too. How many hundreds of people have handled the same ball? Maybe they licked their fingers or been eating something or went to the bathroom and, you know, touched all around, and then they come back, put their fingers in the finger holes dark warm little spot where stuff can grow so you're bowling rolling this bowling ball putting your hand maybe over the little air dryer thing there to let it dry the sweat a little bit same sweat that everybody else has sweated and put in the bowling ball and you've got a hot dog over here you're gonna pick up your hand and eat yeah I'll admit that one that kinda pegged my creepometer a little bit so after the bowling Taking your phone into the bathroom. I do that all the time. I never even really thought about it being all that gross because, you know, it's in my pocket. You clean the, if you're going to sit down, I mean, you're not going to use, well, I guess you could use your phone at the urinal, but yeah, I just don't plan on standing there that long. But if you're taking a sit down, siesta, whatever, in the toilet, John, Lou, whatever you happen to call it, and you're sitting there, you're kind of bored, and you're going to be there a little bit, you might pull your phone out, and check your Facebook, check your Instagram, check your whatever. Hopefully you're not posting pictures or something. Yeah, whole different video. We won't go there. But I guess if you drop your phone, or if when you're done taking care of what you're doing, if you, you know, I would usually put my phone back in my pocket before I'm, you know, finishing up the paperwork, we'll say. And then you re-attire yourself, go out and wash your hands. So I'm really, unless you're laying your phone down, maybe in the floor especially, or even up on the toilet paper holder, I could kind of understand. As long as you're not laying your phone around, I don't really see the issue with it. Unless they think, well, maybe it's the same issue we'll get to in a minute on another issue. Touching shopping carts. Okay, this is one of my wife's pet peeves. She gets into the stores, and the first thing she's looking for when she gets the shopping cart, she pushes it over, and she looks for the little hand towel things. A lot of places are having them now, little wet wipes that you can wipe down the handle on the shopping cart. Now, the interesting thing that I found on that that I thought was interesting is what they said. Another university did a study, and I guess they went to no tell how many shopping malls, and got the shopping carts and did little swabs on them and run back to the lab and had them checked to see what was on there. Would you believe that I think they said, I don't remember the percentage. I wanted to say 71%, but I'm not going to say that because it might be wrong. But the shopping carts supposedly had a huge amount of fecal matter on them. Feces, poop, you know. So, not really sure how all this poop is getting all over things, but the thing that's interesting to me is, my wife, again, don't put no fruit in her drink at a restaurant. 
And it goes to the same thing. She saw something either, maybe it was on the internet, maybe it was a TV show talking about the lemon wedges you get at restaurants or lime wedges, whatever, that they lay around in like the cesspool of juices where the, you know, the employee with bare hands has cut them up and dropped them in there and they lay around, flies come and land on them and things, you know, in the summertime a fly gets in. And so the reason I mention that now is because that thing that the wife saw accused the lemon or lime wedges of having fecal matter on them. So beware of the fecal matter. It's on your shopping cart, it's on your lemon wedge. At least the shopping cart you can wipe down with a wet wipe. I'm not sure you want to do that to the lemon wedge in your drink, so maybe you're to be like the wife and forgo the lemon wedge. Okay, next was stepping on bath mats. And it just went on about how the bath mat, you know, it's in a bathroom, it's a moist place, constantly getting wet, drying wet, drying mold, you know, that kind of stuff. I'm like, yeah, I can kind of buy it. And, of course, their solution was to hang the bath mat up after each use and to wash it at least once a week. And I'm like, unless you have a, the bath mat they showed in their picture was one of those big, thick, foamy ones. I can't see throwing that in the washing machine. I'm not really sure what you're going to do to wash it. Maybe spray it with water and get it wet again with some kind of antibacterial soap maybe added in. I don't know. So next was sleeping on dirty bed sheets. And it wasn't even referring to motels. I expected it to be motels, you know, because of the bed bug craze and all. And Yeah, I've been in some pretty grungy motels in my lifetime. But it was talking about your own personal sheets. Yours, at your house. The ones you lay on every night and you drool on it. You slobber on it. You snot on it. You sweat on it. You exude all kinds of gooeys under your own sheets. And then you may take food up there. And if you add in food, they were discussing that gives an entire breeding ground and food source for the bacteria that's growing in your bed sheets. They recommend washing your bed sheets at least every two weeks. So there it is, two weeks. I don't know. You decide. Next is public swimming pools. <laughs> this is another one like the shopping carts that made me laugh because my wife calls them human stew pots, basically is her idea about a swimming pool. So I get a kick out of that because I'm always thinking in my mind that, yeah, I know, you're going to say possibly the same thing everybody does. People pee in those pools. I know they pee in the pool. I peed in the pool. Okay, yeah, not a long time. I've been in the pool a long time. When I was a child, I peed in the pool, okay? And no, there was no blue dye cloud around me like they showed in the one movie. No, didn't happen. But we all know, yeah, it's human stew. There's all kinds of dirty, nasty bodies. You're supposed to shower before you get in there, but what's that going to do? You're still going to sweat if you're swimming around the pool. You've got SPF 5000 on. You've got this on. You've got baby oil on, or you got cocoa butter on, and all this in the pool. I think I'm more scared of the chemicals than I am the human waste and stuff that gets in the pool because... There's like a million gallons of chlorine in this thing. I mean, try opening your eyes underwater in a pool. Well, at least try it back in the, I don't know, 70s. And you're going to get serious red eye because there's so much stinking chlorine. Yeah, there's not supposed to be living organisms in that type chlorine. And so we're going in it, but, you know, we're not supposed to be drinking it, eating it, and breathing it. But anyway, pools. Eating hair at fast food restaurants. It just labeled it eating hair, but then it went on in that article to explain it was about fast food restaurants and saying that most human adults eat about 12 hairs every year. I'm thinking, okay, I eat 12 hairs a year. Well, I don't eat fast food anymore. That's where the weight loss thing that I talked about in another video came in. But let's say I eat 12 hairs in a year. Has it ever killed anybody? I mean, yeah, it's a little creepy eating somebody else's hair. And I have, honestly, I went in a restaurant one time, had a plate of food, and took a bite and felt something kind of... And I was like, what is this? And I reached up, pulled, and sure enough, it was a hair. Not that long. I pulled it out of my mouth, and I threw it away, and looked at my food, gave it some thought. Hair's already been in my mouth, so it's not like the food is any dirtier than the hair that was in. So I went on, finished my meal, and kept on about my business. I'm not, I guess I'm odd, maybe, or maybe I'm just totally the opposite of germaphobe, but a hair in the food really doesn't freak me out that bad. I mean, yeah, it's 
kind of gross, but the food was cooked. Hopefully it didn't get in the food after it was cooked. Okay, next thing. Wearing perfume. This one kind of, I didn't see where they were going with this. I didn't see at all where they were going with this because I was thinking perfume, like years back perfume, I think they did with like scent glands from certain creatures like skunks and the ones that have a really strong scent they would take their scent glands and take some kind of liquid from that and use it to make the really high expensive perfumes so that's where my mind went based upon my reading or hearing about it on some tv show years back that wasn't where they were going at all they were going to a thing called amber gris I'm probably mispronouncing that, but I'm, it's A-M-B-E-R-G-R-I-S, ambergris, I think. And I was like, okay, so what's this ambergris stuff? And they then go to explain it's sperm whale vomit. Now, here's the thing that's puzzling me, and I really can't get my head around, is how are the perfume companies getting sperm whale vomit. I mean, come on, I, I'm, I don't know, I'm picturing like, you know, you always see the well-dressed, fancy woman dressed up to advertise perfumes. I'm just kind of picturing her with a giant tongue depressor like the size of a tuba six, and they've got this sperm whale dragged up on the beach and she's gagging him, and it's like, you will throw up, you, I don't know. I don't know, maybe they got a little farm of sperm whales somewhere and the sperm whales are going to be forced to vomit, feed them syrup of Ipecat once a day or something by the five-gallon buckets. You know, where's PETA when you need them? You know, they're always, where's this, uh, what are they called, uh, Sea Shepherd, yeah, Sea Shepherd and Greenpeace. I mean, who's collecting sperm whale vomit? Come on, really? Okay, sharing headphones. I, no arguments, hands down, no arguments at all on sharing headphones. I wear over-the-ear headphones, but I've worn in earbuds before, and they're talking about earbuds, because that's what they had in the picture. There is no way possible, at all, ever, your earbud is going in my ear. No, never, 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 never. If we want to share music, we can share music. We'll get a splitter device. I got one upstairs on the computer. I'm not sharing earbuds with nobody. That's just nasty. Okay, using old sponges in the kitchen. They specifically showed the little yellow sponge, the green scratchy on the other side. You know, how many of us don't use them in the kitchen? Use them to clean dishes, clean this and the other. They did have a solution to, you know, breeding ground for bacteria and all. They said maybe uh, every so often you should wash them and or soak them using a bleach water solution they recommended i think it was a cup of bleach per gallon of water or something it's pretty significant i assumed the sponge would eventually come out white with that much bleach so anyway moving on to the next item shaking hands with sick people i was like well yeah we all shake hands and am i going to well wait tell me Hold on, keep that hand back. Are you sick now? I get a doctor's note saying you have a clean bill of health before you grip my hand. I mean, however the article did specify, it was talking more about for the sick person, asking you if you were sick to refrain from shaking hands with others and just explain to them you have a cold or you were sick and tell them you're not shaking hands to protect their health, not your own. That kind of goes even to one further. I was at the VA hospital back, I don't know, a few months ago, and I had the flu. And as I went in, I saw a sign that asked people that were sick, that had any kind of illness, to wear a mask over their face. And I thought, oh, okay. I never noticed that before. So I got one of the little masks and hooked it behind my ears and wore it around and kind of did a little Darth Vader imitation, you know. <sighs> You know, Luke, I'm your father and all that. But it made pretty good sense. I'd seen people wearing them many times, but I honestly thought they were wearing them because they'd had some kind of procedure that made them more susceptible to disease, and so they were 
precautions to protect themselves. I didn't know they were trying to protect me. I'm very grateful now. I guess I should shake their hand every time I see them wearing them. Oh, wait. That would defeat the purpose, huh? Okay, moving on. Letting your dog lick your face. Yeah, I get a dog. And you know, I'm not... I, maybe when I was a child, I might have let the dog lick my face, but as an adult, no, no, no. I've seen videos on YouTube of, like, people letting dogs lick them in the mouth now. Like, I don't know, maybe you could call it French kissing the dog. That's just gross. Our dog has this horrible habit of sitting down, and he does this leg that, you know, sticks his leg up, like, almost behind his head. I don't know, maybe he's triple jointed. And... He licks himself. There's no way the tongue that's been on his own genitals is going to be touching my face. Not happening. That's just nasty. Okay. Keeping your toothbrush in the open. Now, admittedly I do this, but it's at the sink. You know, there is a toilet in the same room as the sink, but the toilet's like on the other side of the room, like feet and feet and feet away from the sink. And the, I don't know if you'd call it the ideal or ideal, the, the plot of their discussion was that every time you flush the toilet, there's water toilet fecal matter flying all through the air and it's going to get on your toothbrush. And I'm thinking, where do these people store their toothbrush on the back of the toilet? Really? M mine's at the sink. So I'm not really too creeped out or worried about that. Plus, I rinse my toothbrush every time before using, after using, and all that. So, I don't know. I'm not freaked out about it. Freak out at your own will, please. Feel free. Number 19 on the list was breathing. Okay, yeah, I could probably hold my breath for maybe a minute or two. I don't know. I've never really tested to see how long I could. But at some point, you're going to breathe. You're not holding your breath. I guess we could all wear the masks that I talked about I saw at the hospital. But the first thing they discussed was that all of us pass gas. And I'm like, what does that have to do with breathing? And they said, every day, did you know? Of course, I, I don't get me wrong, I'm assuming it's another one of those university studies where they went around with sniffers, sniffing the air to find foulness or whatever. I, don't get me wrong about how they do it, but they have computed scientifically somehow that you, yes, every last one of you on the YouTube world and everywhere else, you all breathe in one liter of other people's bodily gases every day. How do they discover this or discern it? I don't know. I mean, it's like all these other studies. They study everything and tell us that they have found conclusive evidence. And then three years later, they go, oops, we blew that one. Let's not tell them we blew it. Let's just publish another study. So anyway, last one on their list was relaxing in a hot tub. And I'm sure my wife would say again, human stew, and this time it's warm human stew, so it's even worse. Now, I'll admit, the public pool doesn't kind of gross me out nearly as bad as like a public use hot tub. Because a hot tub is small, it doesn't get chlorinated, I don't know how often they clean it, I don't know if it has filters, you know, I know a pool has filters, a pool has chlorination in the water. And I know the water is filtered and it's open to the sunshine, so the UV rays of the sun kill some of the bacteria in the pool. Hot tub in maybe a warm, moist, damp area where just good background breeding area for bacteria. And then you get multiple, multiple people with their athlete's foot, their psoriasis, their eczema, their dandruff, their greasy hair. Same hair I was eating earlier, I guess. <laughs> but either way, that's their list of the top 20 things that are kind of gross to them. Add your own down below if you want to leave a comment. And let's see what everybody else comes up with. Because I'll admit, I'm 
not too much of a germaphobe. I don't want to do certain things, but, and I do wash my hands a good bit. So anyway, you all have a good night. I'll see you again. This is James. Goodbye.